Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and in this video, we're going to plot three equations using the same process. We're going to come up with better ways to graph equations down the line, but this is our introduction. So for each equation, we're going to find the intercepts, which are the locations where the graph crosses the X or Y axes. Then we're going to find three other order pair solutions, kind of like a guess and check idea. And then we're going to use those points to sketch our graph of the equation. So the first one, y equals 2x minus 6, this is a linear equation. The graph of this equation should be a straight line. We're going to build a table of points down here. And we're going to end up with five order, maybe five ordered pairs. Uh, we're going to find the intercepts plus three other ordered pair solutions. That looks like that's going to be five. Um, first, let's start with the x-intercept. The x-intercept is wherever y is equal to 0. So starting with the equation y equals 2x minus 6, put in 0 for y and solve for x. 0 equals 2x minus 6. Add 6 to both sides. We get 6 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2. We get x equals 3. So one ordered pair is 3 comma 0. And I'm going to put that right on the graph. That's 3 to the right of the origin. The y-intercept, we'll take care of that next. That is where the x-coordinate is 0. Right? On the y-axis, if it's not to the right or the left, that means that um, it's on the axis. Not to the right or left means that x is 0. Um, substituting 0 in for x, we get y equals 2 times 0 minus 6. That's just 0 minus 6 or negative 6. So when x is 0, y is negative 6. Put a point at negative 6 on the y-axis. So that's two points. Now uh, the creativity comes in. We're going to try to find a few more order pairs. Um, let's try some points near 0 and 3. And you can pick whatever points you want. I'm going to start with x equals 1. y equals 2 times 1 minus 6. y equals 2 minus 6 or negative 4. So 1, negative 4 is another point. Looks like we could do x equals 2. y equals 2 times 2 minus 6. That's 4 minus 6 or negative 2. 2, negative 2. 2 to the right, down 2. Uh, we could do 1 below 0. We could do 1 greater than 3. Um, let's try... A little out there. Let's try x equals 5. Again, no right way to do these. We're just picking points, looking to try to find the pattern. y equals 2 times 5 minus 6. That's 10 minus 6 or 4. So our last order pair is 5 comma 4. 5 to the right of 4. And we can see that those points follow a linear pattern. So arrow down here, draw a straight line up and through the other one like that. So that's a quick sketch, kind of a brute force sketch for this function. There are a couple of other ways. Technically, you only need two points to graph a line. So when we had the intercepts, we could have drawn the line that goes through them. Uh, later, we'll learn to graph using slope and the y-intercept. But for now, that's our start. Second problem listed as number eight x equals the square root of y plus 2. So again, we're going to use the same approach. We're going to look for intercepts, and then we'll find three more ordered pairs that work. Uh, start with the x-intercept, which is where y is 0. So x equals the square root of 0 plus 2. x equals the square root of 2. And Although that is the intercept, square root of 2, comma, 0, I need to have an idea of where to put that on the graph. And using a scientific calculator, the square root of 2 is about 1.4. Uh, Y-intercept, which is where x equals 0. 0 equals the square root of y plus 2. Now, we haven't learned this property to solve this. We could square both sides. 
uh, zero squared equals y plus two squared. Well, technically we've done that. It's similar to a rational exponent problem. So zero squared equals root y plus two squared. Uh, that gives us y, zero equals y plus two or negative two equals y. So zero, negative two. Uh, let me put those two points on the graph. Remember, um, square root of two is about 1.4. So if I zoom in, it's a little less than halfway between one and two. And the other point was zero, negative two. We need a few more points. And here it's gonna be easier to pick values for y than it is to pick values for x. Um, that way we can control uh, x being an integer rather than an irrational number. So what I'm thinking about, when I'm gonna take the square root of y plus two, I want that to be a number that I know the square root of. So even if I come back to here, I know a number who has a square root of zero and it's zero. So whatever makes y plus two equal to zero will work out. So in this next problem, and I don't know what I'm gonna pick for x just yet. I'm sorry, what I'm gonna pick for y just yet, but x equals the square root of y plus two. I wanna find a number that I know the square, uh, square root of, and I know the square root of one. So what makes y plus two equal to one? Negative one does. So if I pick negative one for y, I have x equals the square root of negative one plus two, which is the square root of one, which is one. So one, negative one. Uh, the next point, uh, I, I know the square root of four, what makes y plus two equal to four? What I did here was what made y plus two equal to one. Now I'm trying to think of what makes y plus two equal to four, and I know that that's y equals two, so I'm gonna try that value. y equals two, x equals root two plus two, or root four, square root of four is two, so two comma two is on this function. And finally, um, I know the square root of nine, so what makes y plus two equal to nine? Seven does. So let's try seven. X equals square root of seven plus two. X equals root nine. X equals three. So three comma seven is our third extra point. And there's the, um, the points to work with. Now, one thing that we do know is that on a real number graph, which is what we're doing here, anytime we graph an equation, we're dealing with a real number graph in this class. Um, if y is lower than negative two, then what's inside that square root is gonna be negative and we can't take the square root of a negative number as a real number. So that's where this graph actually begins. It begins at zero, negative two, and then it sweeps up and through all the rest of those points. And it's not linear, it's got a little bend to it. Let's try one more. This one's gonna be a little more straightforward because now we have an equation of y in terms of x instead of x in terms of y. That's kind of backwards for the way we normally think of things, but uh, it doesn't mean that we have to keep thinking of them that way. All right, let's find the intercepts first for y equals x squared plus nine. Uh, the x-intercept where y is zero, zero equals x squared minus nine. Hmm. Add nine to both sides, we get nine equals x squared. And then we're gonna take the square root of both sides, but remember when we take the square root of that constant side, we're gonna use the plus or minus sign. Square root, plus or minus square root of nine equals the square root of x squared. And after all that, we end up with x equals plus or minus three. There are actually two x-intercepts here. So when we build our table, three, zero, and negative three, zero, are the two x intercepts. The y intercept, which is where x is zero, is gonna be y equals zero squared minus nine 
that's simply negative 9. So 0, negative 9, that is the uh, y-intercept. 0, negative 9. Oops. Yeah, that's in the right spot. So now I can see the pattern of this graph is really different than the first two that we did. Um, I'm going to pick um, some points in between 0 and uh, between negative 3 and 3. Let's start with um, x equals 1. y equals 1 squared minus 9. 1 minus 9 is negative 8. So that's right here. Uh, let's try 2. x equals 2. y equals 2 squared minus 9. That's 4 minus 9 or negative 5. So 2, negative 5. That's about there. Uh, maybe some points on the left of 0 would be helpful. Let's try x equals negative 1. y equals negative 1 squared minus 9. That's 1 minus 9 again, or negative 8. So negative 1, negative 8. That's about there. That's all we needed was three other ones. Um, I could have used negative 2 and got another point at negative 2, negative 5. The more points you have, the easier it is to draw. You're just following the roadmap. Something like this. Uh, if you don't remember what this is called, that's a parabola, U-shaped graph. All right, that's it for this first section in our Chapter 2. In the next section, we'll move on to talk about circles.